Hello YouTube, my name is Marie and today I'm going to talk about the first six episodes in the currently airing K-drama Flower Crew Josen Marriage Agency. Talk about an unnecessary long title. <laughs> Now we're really going to just sit and chat about this because I didn't prepare any notes but it's something that I watched over the last two days and I kind of want to just like let you know how I feel about it. Now this show follows a matchmaking agency in Joseon period Seoul, if that makes sense. A blacksmith is really persistent. He like knocks down the door of this matchmaking agency over and over and over again day after day and insists that they plan the wedding between him and his long-term friend who's like doesn't really have a job but she just does a bunch of odd jobs she's a really like jack of all trades she'll do anything for a coin and finally the marriage agency you know they break down they say yes and upon the day of their wedding he goes missing is he kidnapped is did he run away I guess you'll have to watch to find out. But there is definitely major plot happening with him and his disappearance and who is he really and all that stuff. If I had watched this maybe four, three, four years ago, I probably would have loved it because I, at that time, I wouldn't have known all the K-drama staple tropes as well as I do. And this show is using a lot of them toying this really interesting line with its storytelling between being like hyper obvious no that's not the right way to say that it's like taking certain situations especially in the first couple of episodes while it's trying to establish everything it's taking situations and instead of like presenting it in like a normal way it'll like turn up the drama of it to like a billion to really get the point across of what it's trying to show. So I think I think the only way you're going to get what I'm trying to say is if I give you an example. So the flower crew, the matchmaking agency, they're kind of treated like celebrities. And instead of kind of like showing that in a more like organic way, in the first episode they have a fabric vendor drop red fabric to like roll out kind of like a red carpet and then they walk down it and everyone's cheering so it's like it's a really obvious metaphor to like today's celebrities so there are moments like that where it's just like it's doing a lot and then other moments that actually got me invested that are very quiet there are a lot of very quiet moments between characters that are super sweet and i'm like gosh darn it, suddenly I'm invested in this mediocre show with stereotypical characters and great, now I'm here. <laughs> so I'll give you an example for that as well. So there's uh, one moment where one of the flower crew is washing our female lead's hands and it was so touching. I was like, And there was like very little dialogue happening in that scene which actually to me elevated it because everything else is so so much right it, everything about the show is doing so much and then there's these quiet moments that really have impact and maybe it's because they're in contrast to those other scenes but um another one that i thought was just great was when our male lead is kind of down on himself oh there's another thing the male lead is not actually our female lead's fiance. The male lead is the leader of the matchmaking agency, now that that's out of the way. And he's like really down on himself and our female lead gets him to help her wash bedding and they're like in this big hub and they're stomping around and it was just so cute. They didn't explain to the audience she was trying to make him feel better. They just like showed this moment play out and it was really nice. It was a really nice moment. Um, I'm now invested in these characters, which I already said, they're mediocre at best. They're full of stereotypes. They're not very interesting. And they're ones that we've seen a hundred times before. So yeah. Hey guys, sorry to just jump in here with like a totally different background and lighting and different clothes, but I'm editing right now and I realized that there's a few things that I didn't mention over there. <laughs> 
So one of them being, I actually really loved watching the matchmaking process. I feel like I've actually learned a lot about traditional weddings. And then a major thing that I didn't talk about that I think is a problem with this show is that they don't spend a lot of time establishing the female lead and the blacksmith's blacksmith relationship and that's like a huge story element you know like he goes missing on the day of their wedding but you don't really get their relationship so i think it needed honestly only like one more scene of them like interacting in a normal day-to-day -day setting just to really understand their relationship because you don't really get it right now like when i say they're long-term friends or maybe they're like a sibling relationship that's just me guessing basically because the show doesn't really tell you exactly what they are to each other he obviously loves her but does she love him like it's so kind of like loose and up in the air maybe they will like develop it more later but i think it's a big problem because as the show goes on and you focus on the blacksmith or the fiance and what happened to him like after he disappears it's like i don't feel very connected to him whatsoever and i don't really care about his storyline at all because you were not allowed to care about him and the female lead's relationship you know like i just feel like they missed some crucial establishment when it comes to his character and her the relationship between the two because right now i'm like why should i care why why should i even root for them to find each other again when he's not the male lead like i'm not gonna fall for second male lead syndrome mm -mm -mm. you're not gonna get me <laughs> anyways yeah back to the video so at the end of it am i gonna keep watching the show probably yes <laughs> Yes, not probably yes, because after I finish editing, I do want to go watch another couple episodes before I have to go to work. And that's because it's so comfortable. Like, it's not trying to do anything spectacular with the plot so far. It's not trying to push any envelopes. It's not trying to be new or unique. And this might all sound like a negative, but to me, it's actually quite easy and comfortable to watch because I'm not going to be surprised it's just predictable, easy, enjoyable entertainment. It actually feels a lot to me like Tale of Noctu, where I kind of feel the similar, like, it's not great, but it's okay. And it's not bad, but it's okay. So it's like, it's inhabiting this like middle area of like a three star, three out of five. Um, the only difference with between this one and Tale of Noctu um, is that I like the characters a little bit more here and also the actors more here so and there's more to watch I can actually sit down and like binge a little bit of this whereas with Tale of Noctu I would have had to wait week to week and that like waiting week to week for a show that you're not really enjoying is just it's not gonna happen for me. Yeah, I'm gonna keep watching this one. I may or may not do a full review of on it. We'll see how the plot goes because it is a three star show, so I might abandon it at any time. <laughs> All right, let me know down below if you are watching uh, Flower Crew and what you feel about it. Have a good day, have a good night, bye.